STAN is a standardized set of methods and a network protocol to allow an end host to discover its public IP address if it is located behind a NAT. It is used to permit NAT traversal for applications of real-time voice, video, messaging, and other interactive IP communications. It is documented in RFC 5389. The STAN URI scheme is documented in RFC 7064. STAN is intended to be a tool to be used by other protocols, such as ICE. The STAN protocol allows applications operating behind a network address translator to discover the presence of the network address translator and to obtain the mapped IP address and port number that the NAT has allocated for the application's user to tag RAM protocol connections to remote hosts. The protocol requires assistance from a third-party network server located on the opposing side of the NAT, usually the public Internet. Design, STAN is a lightweight client Euro server network protocol. Its purpose is to allow an application running on a host to determine whether or not it is located behind a network device that is performing address translation. The basic protocol operates essentially as follows, the client sends a message to a STAN server on the public internet. The STAN server responds with a success response that contains in its payload the IP address and port of the client as observed from the server's perspective. The result is obfuscated through XOR mapping to work around NATs that indiscriminately translate payload IP addresses present in STAN responses. STAN messages are usually sent in user datagram protocol packets. Since UDP does not provide reliable transport guarantees, reliability is achieved by application-controlled retransmissions of the STAN requests. STAN servers do not implement any reliability mechanism for their responses. When reliability is mandatory, the transmission control protocol may be used, but induces extra networking overhead. In security-sensitive applications, STAN may be transported and encrypted by transport layer security. An application may automatically determine a suitable STAN server for communications with a particular peer by querying the domain name system for the STAN or STAN server record resource record, for example, STAN. udp.example.com The standard listening port number for a STAN server is 3478 for UDP and TCP, and 5349 for TLS. Alternatively, TLS may also be run on the TCP port if the server implementation can do multiplex TLS and STAN packets. In case no STAN server is found using DNS lookups, the standard recommends that the destination domain name should be queried for address records, which would be used with the default port numbers. In addition to using protocol encryption via TLS, STUN also has built-in authentication and message integrity mechanisms via specialized STUN packet types. When a client has discovered its external address, it can use this as a candidate for communicating with peers by sharing the external NAT address rather than the private address. If both peers are located in different private networks behind a NAT, the peers must coordinate to determine the best communication path between them. Some NAT behavior may restrict peer connectivity even when the public binding is known. The Interactive Connectivity Establishment Protocol provides a structured mechanism to determine the optimal communication path between two peers. Session Initiation Protocol extensions are defined to enable the use of ICE when setting up a call between two hosts. Obsolete STUN NAT Characterization Algorithm, RFC 5389 obsoletes the previous specification, documented in RFC 3489 that specified an algorithm to allow endpoints to characterize NAT behavior, according to the address and port mapping behavior. The algorithm was dropped from RFC 5389, as it is not reliably successful and only applicable to a subset of deployed NAT devices. Limitations Network address translation is implemented via a number of different address and port mapping schemes, none of which is standardized. STAN is not a self-contained NAT traversal solution applicable in all NAT deployment scenarios and does not work correctly with all of them. It is a tool among other methods and it is a tool for other protocols in dealing with NAT traversal, most notably traversal using relay NAT and interactive connectivity establishment. STAN does work with three types of NAT, full co-NAT, restricted co-NAT, and port-restricted co-NAT. 
In the cases of restricted cone or port restricted cone NATs, the client must send out a packet to the endpoint before the NAT will allow packets from the endpoint through to the client. STUN does not work with symmetric NAT which is often found in the networks of large companies. Since the IP address of the STUN server is different from that of the endpoint, in the symmetric NAT case, the NAT mapping will be different for the STUN server than for an endpoint. TURN offers better results with symmetric NAT. See also, Port Control Protocol, UDP Hole Punching, Internet Gateway Device Protocol, External Links, Stuntman, Open Source Stun Server Code for RFC 5389 and RFC 3489, Stunt Stun and TCP2, which extends Stun to include TCP functionality, Yahoo! Director of Engineering Explaining Stun and Turn